Okay, so welcome to the demonstration of our talent at UNI system. We will walk through the system from both the employee and supervisor uh, viewpoints. Uh, like I said, Scott is going to demonstrate what the employee sees and I will um, demonstrate it from the supervisor perspective. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen uh, to show you the, the talent unite system, you know, from my standpoint as an employee. So when my supervisor launched my performance appraisal, I would have received an email. And in that email, there would be a link to the talent of UNI system. So when I click on that link, basically it takes me to this page here. So in order to get to the talent UNI system, either you could you know, click on that link in the email. Otherwise, you can go to talent.uni.edu to get to this page as well. So when I get to the talent of UNI page, so as in human resource services, I have a few different options and you would see when you log into talent UNI. Uh, the first one here I just want to point out is the about me. So you would be able to see the two options where it says journal and performance appraisals. So the performance appraisals is used to either look at the current appraisal or you can change the status to complete to view previous year's appraisals. Under my team, you would be able to see performance appraisals, but you won't have these other options here. One thing I like to mention here too, over here, there's a button for journal entry. We will mention, and you'll be able to see uh, journal entries as you kind of demonstrate throughout the talent UNI system. So kind of think of journal entries as a way that you can kind of, as like a file cabinet where you can keep track of either projects or accomplishments or things that you've worked on throughout the year. And that way you can kind of keep these journal entries saved in talent UNI. So when it's time for you to do your self-appraisal, you can refer back to those to know what you would like to include in your self-appraisal. Just a nice simple way for you to kind of keep track of those, you know, throughout the year in the system itself. So down below here, see under my performance appraisals, my 21-22 performance appraisal is currently at the employee goal development stage. So I'll go ahead and click on that to enter my performance appraisal. So I log into appraisal, you see for Scott Clausen's my 21-22 performance appraisal, it takes me to the start page. As you see along to the top, you would be able to have access to each of the different sections of the performance appraisal. But at the goal setting stage, the only part that you'll need to complete is actually the goal setting tab. The start page just gives you more information about the process and about goal setting. And it does uh, give you more information about SMART goals and tells you in order to continue to click on the, the button on the bottom right to go into it to begin entering your goals. So you can click on continue down here or else up here you can click on goal setting as well. So under goal setting, uh, just one thing I want to mention to you. So this goal, sec goal section below is visible at different steps throughout the appraisal process. And it gives you instructions for how to complete each of the different steps. So if you're working on the employee goal development step, you can refer to this section here to give you more information about how to complete that step. If you're working on the supervisor edit approved goal step, you can read those instructions and so forth. So down below here is where I would enter my goals. So I did that uh, earlier today, so you'd be able to see them. Either you can go in here and actually type in your goals. Otherwise, you can copy and paste them from another document as well. Uh, again, down below here too. So right here, I put in exit survey. Down below, you actually can type in the actual goal itself. Either by typing in there or else you can copy and paste. Uh, I entered in there two goals for this demonstration. If I wanted to add a third goal, I can go down here and click add goals. Then another box will pop up and I can add my third goal, the title and the description. If I don't wanna enter my third goal, I can also click on the icon over here uh, to remove that. And then it shows my two goals from before. As you might notice too, as I'm working on this, uh, there's a little icon that comes up to show that it is saving automatically. So I don't have to worry about it saving. The system does that every so often for me. There it is right there. Let me know that it's saving my information. So once I'm done entering my goals, um, what I can do is go right over here to next steps. Uh, I do have access to these other sections, but that's not anything that I would need to complete now. I would complete that later on in the process. But in order to move it on to the next step, I go over here and click on next steps. So this is telling me here too, down below under goal setting, you'll see the two goals I entered in there for exit survey and position descriptions. So if I'm ready, uh, to move it on to the supervisor approved goal step. 
I'll go and go click on go to next step down below here. Right now, if I'm back to my home page and I see that my appraisal is now at the supervisor edit and approve goal set. Okay, so now that Scott has entered his goals um, as a supervisor, you'll get an email alerting you that the employee has submitted their goals for either your review and approval. So just like he demonstrated before, you would log into the talent at UNI system and under team performance appraisals, you'll be able to see your entire team and what step of the process they are at in the performance appraisal um, process. So I can see that we are currently at supervisor edit approved goals. So I will click on that supervisor. My start page looks a little different than what it did for Scott um, because these are my instructions as a supervisor, what I'm supposed to do for approving the goals. Um, so I can read through those and click continue in order to go to the goal setting page. And so as Scott noted before, there are different instructions depending on what step of the process you're at. So if I need some clarification on what I should be doing at that supervisor edit approved goal step, that is where I would reference um, those instructions. And so if I scroll down, what I can see um, are the goals that Scott has entered. If uh, I wanted as a supervisor, I could make edits. So if I've talked with Scott and realized, hey, this, this first goal, we really need to have this done by May, not June, I could type in there and edit that. If there are additional goals that I think should be added, I could click on add goals and I could add um, an additional goal. We're just gonna, for the sake, do test number three. And I can put something in there. Um, if I decided, you know, I didn't wanna include that, just like before, I could click delete. I could also delete one of these other goals that were already put in. If we just, if I decide, no, this position description goal is not something we're gonna do, I could delete it. So once I've reviewed these and made any edits that I wanna make, there are a couple of different things I could do. I could press continue and it's gonna take me through page by page the entire form, or I can come up to the top and because I know at this time, I don't need to do anything with performance um, factors or the position description or professional development plan. I can just click on next step. And here on this page, I can see the goals that we have listed. And if I um, click go to next step, it'll move it to the next step of the process. And essentially that is my approval of the goals. Once I click go to next step, Scott would get an email saying that the goals had been approved. So I've done that and now the appraisal is at this ongoing performance and goal attainment step. So as I mentioned earlier, that's kind of an idle time in terms of anything in the system, but it's a very active in terms of employees working towards attaining their goals and, and supervisors and employees continuing to meet on an ongoing basis. Um, at this time, you can open the appraisal and, and view things, but changes can't be made to it. So I could open this and I could go to goal setting and I could I would be able to um, see the goals, but I think I opened it too quickly after refreshing. Sorry, we're in a, a test environment, so it's not cooperating as much with us as I would like, but I would be able to view those goals. So that's what happens um, at the, um, at the ongoing performance appraisal stuff. 
So once that form gets moved forward um, to the self-appraisal, we will now demonstrate what the employee sees at the self-appraisal. Scott, it looks like he's already moved it forward. We did some behind the, behind the scenes magic. <laughs> and share my screen again. So we're back into talent at UNI. So as you can see that my 2122 is now at the employee self-appraisal step. So I'll go back and click into my appraisal. So if I go back to goal setting, I would be able to see the goals that are currently listed for me. I'm also able to see the goal that my supervisor added. So I can see test number three, and test goal listed there that you know my supervisor added. I'm able to see the change that she made, you know, to the due date for the exit survey. I'm able to make comments here if I if I choose to. And save and share those comments. I do have an option if I want to make a comment and save it as private. And then basically, then as we'll demonstrate later, if, you know that comment is only visible to myself, it wouldn't be visible to my supervisor. So next, if I either can click on continue, It's circling up on the top. It's all, it only yeah. takes long when we uh, are demonstrating. <laughs> okay, now I'm at the performance factors page. So as, as I mentioned before, once I'm in the system here, it does give me each of the performance rating categories and definitions that we talked about before. So if you wanna refer back to those, you can see each of the rating categories and definitions. So down below here is each of the rating categories. And for each one of these under the self-appraisal, I would actually rate myself. So if I hover over each one of these stars, I would be able to see each of the different rating scale and give me the, a brief definition of each. So unsatisfactory, needs improvement, successful performance, exceeds expectations, and exceptional. So for each one of these, I would go ahead and rate myself. And if I want to add a comment, I can add a comment here and hit save and share. Then I move on to the next factor and gives you know, the definition of this one. This one, I'll rate myself unsatisfactory. Next one is organizational skills. For this one, I'll give myself exceptional. Critical thinking, decision-making, successful performance. Like I said, I can, I can add a comment you know, for each one of these. For this example, I'm gonna save it as private. So then later on, we'll be able to see um, that my supervisor wouldn't be able to see this comment. Here's some teamwork, I'll give exceeds expectations. Strategic initiatives, I'll give a successful performance. If I'm done entering my self-appraisal for each one of these factors, I can go down below here and hit continue. The next tab is the position description review tab. So this is basically asking me is if I believe that my position description needs to be updated, it asks I put in a comment of yes. If no changes are needed, I'll just click continue. So for this example, I'll put in a comment of yes. Save and share. Then I'll move on to the professional development plan. So this plan here is, is basically a way for you and your supervisor to identify different professional development goals and objectives. So this section is optional. So I can choose to fill out this information. There's, there's several questions up here that are employee only. And there is questions down below that are supervisor only. So this is a good way that can be used as part of your meeting with employee as far as you know conversation starters and discussion points that you can talk about when you meet with the, with your employee for the performance appraisal. So each one of these I'll just put in a comment. Down below here also gives me opportunity to add additional comments. When I'm done completing this section, I can just go ahead and hit continue. So now it takes me to the next steps tab. So right now it gives me a little warning message. This lets me know that once I click go to next step, I will no longer be able to edit my responses. 
and return to this page. You know, so this gives me another opportunity if I want to go back, you know, to the performance factors or to the professional development plan and make any edits to that. This is my opportunity to do so. But if I'm ready to move this on to the supervisor step, let's go down here and click go to next step. I'm back to my home page and I see that my performance appraisal is now at the supervisor appraisal step. Great. So now I am going to show what the supervisor um, sees when they do the performance appraisal. Maybe. Okay, so once Scott submitted his self appraisal, I would have received an email alerting me to the fact that um, that was com completed and it was ready for me to. Um, go in and complete my supervisor appraisal. So I will open that form. And I will see my instructions for completing the appraisal. Um, again, just like before, I can skip you know, right to the goal section by clicking there. Or if I want to scroll to the bottom and click continue, I can go through page by page. So at this point, I can see the goals that we established. Um, last year, and I can see Scott's comment on the goal. And if I want to add um, a comment as well, I would click on add comment, and maybe I'll put goal achieved. And I could save and share that. So if I decide that I want to change my comments or edit it, you would click on these three little ellipses over here on the right, and I can either edit my comment or I can delete my comment. So I'm going to edit it and say goal achieved on time. And just like Scott demonstrated before, when you're adding a comment, um, you have the option to save and share. When you save and share, that just means that the employee will be able to see the comment when you move it forward to the next step. You're not sharing it live as it happens. So don't worry that anything you're entering makes is instantly available is when the form is moved to the next step for them to see. Or I could click save as private and then it's only visible to me. I'm gonna click continue. And now we're at the performance factor section. So again, those performance factor definitions are listed at the top as well as if I hover over the, the stars, I would see the definitions for unsatisfactory needs improvement, successful performance, exceeds, and exceptional. I can see how Scott as the employee rated themselves, but I can't change their ratings. So they rated themselves as successful performance. I can't try to change this to exceptional. I can only enter um, my ratings of the employee. So in this case, I'm going to say exceeds. And if I want to add a comment, and you should on all of these performance factors, put in you know, that supporting documentation that supports the rating that you're giving the employee, I would add in my comment. And I would go through each section and provide my ratings and supporting documentation. This critical thinking section, that was the um, area where when Scott was completing it as the employee where he um, said he saved a private comment. And as you can see, the supervisor cannot see that. So I've gone through and added all my ratings and the and the supporting documentation. So I will click continue. 
And I get to the position description tab and I can see that Scott has indicated that his position description does in fact need updated. So my instructions as a supervisor are if it needs updated to comment below with the date that it would be reviewed by. So I'm going to add a date of August 1st of 22 and save and share that so that when we get to the meeting step and we're reviewing this appraisal, um, Scott will be able to see that I've said, yep, we're going to review that by August 1st. And last is that professional development plan section. So I could see how Scott answered the questions about, you know, the, the challenging aspects of their job and, and what they felt they've excelled in. So just some additional questions that are great to initiate conversation and, um, you know, maybe some long-term career planning for the employee. But I won't, I, I can view their answers, but I wouldn't want to add anything to the employee section, you'll answer the questions that are supervisor only. So you have the ability to type um, and answer those questions. I would be able to view Scott's comments. And if I have additional comments for this section, um, I could add those here. And then I would press continue. So on that next steps page, um, I'm going to get a bright red box that says, don't move this form until you're ready to meet with Scott. So just as a reminder, if you move this form to the next step, which is the supervisor employee appraisal meeting, the employee will have access to view all of the ratings and comments that you have entered. So I would hold off on moving this forward to the employee until you are ready to meet with them. So, you know, you might be writing it, you know, sometime in the middle of March, but if you're not scheduled to meet with them till April, don't move this forward until you're ready to meet with them. The overall rating for the performance appraisal has been established here, and this rating is determined by how the supervisor um, completed um, their ratings of those performance factors. It's automated. It, it, it doesn't let you change it. So you can't say, oh, well, those ratings said successful, but I want to rate them higher. You can't override the rating. Um, and the rating is determined just by the supervisor ratings, not by the employee's ratings of themselves. Um, you can still see that summary page here. If I have final comments on the appraisal that I want to include, I could insert those here on this last page. So I can see that Scott didn't have any final comments, but I could put my final comments. In this test example, Teresa is my supervisor. Um, this is just an odd quirk of the system that it puts um, essentially the supervisor's supervisor here and automatically puts no comments made. Um, and it's something that we can't take out of there, but they don't have the ability to actually log in and make comments on the appraisal. So I just want you to be aware, this isn't a, a, a case where Teresa logged in and, and commented no comments. It, it actually didn't have the ability to do so. So if I'm happy with where we're at here um, and I'm ready to have that meeting with the employee, I will click on go to next step. And at this point, I can see that the appraisal form is at that meeting step. So at this point, both the employee and the supervisor have access to the form and can review it. Um, for the employee, it's in view only mode. As a supervisor, you have the ability to make changes at this step. So if I open this form and I've had my, my meeting with Scott, and through our meeting, I've decided that I'm gonna update um, one of the ratings on the performance factor because we had a discussion and, and ultimately decided I need to rate them differently. I can do that. So just like you've done before, you can click continue and go through step-by-step step, or you can skip right to the section that you wanna update. So I'm gonna skip right to performance factors. And you know, as a result of our meeting, Scott and I have decided that this communication rating, I'm going to revise. And so maybe I'll do that. 
and I'm going to add a comment that I revised the rating and put some additional supporting documentation in, in there. And I'm going to save that. Um, I could make adjustments on any of the ratings and add any additional comments um, that I wanted to at this time. So I'm, gonna, I'm not going to make any other changes at this time. I'm just going to click continue. And if I wanted to add additional comments on the position description or professional development plan, I could. But I'm going to go ahead and just skip to the end. <clears throat> and where I um, will see that the next step is employee acknowledgement. So it's you know alerting me if I haven't had an opportunity to share this. Um, with my supervisor and want to get their feedback, I should do that now before I send this um, to Scott. Um, I will, you can also see that the overall rating did change um, because I, I adjusted that um, individual performance factor and that was enough to move him up to ex exceeds expectations. So if I am okay with this appraisal and the changes we've made. I'm going to click go to next step and it's going to move it to Scott for him to acknowledge completion of the appraisal. I go back into talent you and I, my uh, appraisal now is at the employee <laughs> acknowledgement step. So if I click on my performance appraisal, so if I go back into goal settings or if I go back into any one of these sections, for me right now, this is only view only. I'm not able to make any changes, but I can go through here and view all the information that was entered in there for me. Also under performance factors, I can go back and I can see the change that my supervisor made after our meeting. So I can see when she made the change to communication and now there's revised rating supporting documentation. I can see the change that she just made after our meeting. But as I go through here, I'm not able to make any changes at all. That's the same for each one of these different sections. So if I go back to next steps, what does this tell me essentially is if I go to click go to next step, this serves as my acknowledgement that I have seen my performance appraisal. I can go through here and I can see all the, the rating scales. I can see the performance factors listed here and what each myself and my supervisor uh, rated for each one of the categories. Down below here does give me an option to put any final comments. One of the interesting thing about the system as well, it does have a box here you know, to check if my supervisor will be notified and has seen this appraisal. Uh, one thing about the system is, um, Regardless if this box is checked or not, my supervisor will be notified um, in the system. It was something that we we're not able to change. Uh, so whether this box are, is checked or not, my supervisor will be notified. So that's just a little uh, interesting quirk about the system as well when you get to this step. So if I'm ready, if I viewed everything and you know I put in my final comments, I'm ready to acknowledge that I have seen my appraisal. I can click here to uh, go to next step. Right now, my appraisal is at the supervisor sign-off step. And so now I would have gotten an alert that I can go in and um, view um, as a supervisor sign-off on the appraisal um, now that Scott has acknowledged it. So I'll log in and I will open up the appraisal, it gives me my instructions saying Scott's reviewed the appraisal and signed off. Um, it says now it's time for me to sign off on it. If I click continue, just like when the employee was reviewing um, and acknowledging, it was an edit, it was, there was no edit mode. There's no edit mode for the supervisor. Everything is just view only. So I can view the comments that we've made. I can view, um, I can go to the performance factors and I can view those comments and ratings, but I can't make any changes. So I'm gonna go ahead and just go to that next steps page. And what I'll see here is that overall rating, you know, and it's giving me that warning that this is my final sign off for this review and that I should ensure that those 
ratings are accurate because um, once I move this to go to next step, our performance appraisal is complete.